Greg. Yes. Do you want to start by talking about some of the things that we left dangling? Oh. And some other materials that you brought that you wanted to walk us through? So we forwarded on some of the materials that were utilized in the, in the referendum previous to this, the 60.1 um, It's just some. Um, can you hear you can no, you can closer? Oh, these yeah. fans are really, really loud. Really um, loud. So, you know, you have the boards behind you from the pre-referendum project. Pardon my back. My mother did raise me better. <laughs> um, and then you also see that we forwarded on and here and forwarded some of the information materials that were used in that campaign for that 60.1 project. That's what you have in front of you. Um, just for information, based on escalation costs and what we're seeing in the market, we did recalculate that 60.18 million. And if you were to put the identical job out, you're about 62 and a half million. Okay, so there was a jump in the pricing. Okay. That so it went from what to what? 62 and a half. From 61 to 60. Okay. 60. Yeah. So that's based on just escalation, okay. based on nine months between the March vote and the potential December. Does it have to do with the tariffs? Too? There's, a, there's a lot going into effect. We're, a lot of our estimating, we're starting to add 20%, uh, 30% to, um, and just because there's the tariff situation with structural steel, we're having issues with manpower. And the timing, SED is really, if you're not timing projects, a lot more micromanager, you know, of, of when they get scheduled and when they come out, you're going to be hitting periods of bidding that we're seeing like late spring bidding for that summer and that's pumping the prices up too because the contractors just aren't able to man up the projects and they're almost able to put a number out of jobs if they're getting it. Is, is there a best time to do it then? Um, we're finding that if we can get, say for example, if we were to want to do work in 2019 in the summer, if we can get it bid January, February time frame, that's kind of one of our goals to try to shoot for. Okay. Um, that allows time to you know, decide what you want to do, move ahead with contracts, and also start getting materials and things ordered that are along lead items, you know, those eight to ten weeks for windows or right. eight to twelve weeks for mechanical equipment and things. You know, if you're expecting a June start, you really want to have those things available to you. But could you back it up even further though? Because as, if we could went out to vote in November, mm -hmm. then it would have to go to SED. When you go to vote, you're basically your vote, your community saying yes, you can spend up to this amount of money to perform this scope of work. Then we still have to do our design, which will take six to nine months. So just theoretically, let's play this out that you vote, say it's a summer, just for weeks, okay? December, early December, you have approval from the community to do a project. We start the process of designing the documents that will be submitted to state ag. We may break this up in multiple phases, so we're not hitting all the buildings all at once. Uh, but let's just say we started and we want to submit uh, high school Layton and middle school because that's one of the priority facilities. Probably around uh, June, July, August time frame in the summer, we get that in state ed. We would also be a big promoter of an expedited review if that process keeps working the way we're seeing it work because instead of a six to nine month state ed review, you can get anywhere from two to three months review from what we're seeing right now with an expedited review. So let's just say we want expedited review, uh, we submit, and we should have response back by December of 2019. So it's almost about a year turnaround from when we vote to when we get approval. But if we, we don't have any review approval for anything right now no, right because there's no part of that that goes to SED until you have the vote back. correct okay correct and, and the reason for that too Jim is you know there's risk on our part and there's risk on your part so you're going to make a commitment to say we have you design and submit this work yeah we're going to pay you X dollars. yeah right and unfortunately if the vote doesn't yeah. go through you don't get it. oh yeah you know, right so no, I get it. That's kind of, we, we have done that in certain instances, it's a much smaller scale, but this <coughs> is, oh, we got voter approval, boom, we submit, you know, within a week or two after voter approval. But we don't, magnitude of this, we don't have that. 
So a year from vote <coughs> to expedited review in this scenario, in this scenario yeah. to when would work actually start? Because it would be summer of 2020. So that falls into that timeline where we say January, February bidding, which would be January, February of 2020. Signed contracts, order materials, and then it would be at least an 18 to 24 month cycle. So it would be in summer 2020. You'd be going over to the summer 2021 and probably wrapping up either that fall or late fall of 2020 for that first phase. That's a similar start date to what we previously had, doesn't it? Similar, yes. I'd have to go back yeah. and verify that. Right, so we didn't lose But we, at that point, we didn't have an expedited review to jump on. Okay. We were still right. working on the six to nine, nine months. That's yeah. deep. Right, got it. Yeah. So you, just to be clear on this, so then you're saying if the work would start summer of 2020 and it would wrap up in the fall of 2021. Fall 2021. Correct. The first phase. The first phase. The first phase, the first phase. Yeah. right. Yeah. Which would be high school, middle school, and the fall Correct. Fall. Correct. Craig, do you want to tell them how the expedited review works? Okay. Um, has everyone heard about the expedited review? Yeah. Yeah. That uh, the city of OCS is, is partnering with the city that department. Yeah. Uh, so basically, we submit our project, and once it gets logged into the state and all day, they send back, okay, we received the project, it's ready for you. We can request at that point um, to have an expedited review. And what that is, is it's based on the value of the work project value that will work, they have a scale of how much it would cost to have that, plus a $950 shipping and handling fee. Um, but what that does is, is, I forget who put it so well, someone told me they, they treat it like um, Disney. I mean, everyone gets to go to Disney, but you got the fast pass, you get in front of the line. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a purpose, they're used to utilizing um, other consultant firms, engineering firms, architectural firms from across the state to do preliminary reviews and a thorough review. They send it back to the state ed when they found it, you know, in compliance or acceptable, and they do a quick check to make sure, and then it, it really cuts the review time down from what it currently is. What, what, we, what we've done with some of our other clients is analyze the cost of that review because it is pay to get to the front of the line essentially yeah. against yeah. what the inflation factor might be if you don't take it. It's going to make sense. And it usually makes sense. So for, for a project, $60 million project, it would be about. But it's each phase. It's each phase. phase. So say the first phase is 25 million. I had to check with their sliding scale. It's, it's, it's you don't have to get that. I, I, don't think I, got but I can get that information yeah, I think for, for you. So yeah, if we did the whole 60 million, I think it was like 45,000, 45 to maybe yeah, $60,000 range. And it is an incidental expense. It is needed. So you get your need back on. So it's not like the district's putting dollar for dollar cash. So of that 45, we get 60% or so. Well, it sounds to me like the rate of inflation based on the numbers you're talking about is somewhere one eight to two percent that we see in a nine month. So uh, it, it absolutely makes sense if you if you're you going out quicker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, yeah. You're, we, we jumped a million two. and a half or so, one point two five yep. in nine months on a six million dollar project. If it cost forty five thousand dollars, of which sixty percent is aided. Yeah. yeah. As long as everything keeps working the way it's been working, yeah. they're still working out bugs here and there. Right. Uh, but the turnaround has been pretty decent compared to just something sit there and wait. Now, how does that work? Is I think you touched on it a little bit with the um, the sixty percent that's aidable. So that is not money that's ever out of our pocket. Is that like paid or do we? You are bonding. You're bonding. Right. You're borrowing the money right. to do the project. And as you close out portions, we file like final cost reports. Right. That's what triggers your eight payments and stuff coming back to you. Okay. So when we develop a project for you, we know what is going to be spent and how. We'll partner with uh, fiscal advisors and have them come and actually do financial breakdown how they model it so that they minimize local shares right. uh, and maximize the biggest right. 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 They, they did that for us before, and they. Yeah. they showed how it was falling off and how we were coming in and this is how the aid picks up and that's what they, they it's a magic formula it's, yeah. you're, you're at that time where 
you have the retirement debt coming up, which is offsetting some of the local share as well. And it's, you know, right. it's going like this over the life of the project. So there's a lot to it. Right. Well, and I think that those are important things for the community to understand because when they just hear the big number and they don't understand 60% of Right. You know what I mean? Like that's right. this key part to mm -hmm. you know getting that message up. The, the aid is principal aid interest. So it's we've all because that UV is very loud. Yeah, it's print sorry, it's principal the aid comes back in principal and interest. And it's, oh I didn't realize so that. It's wow. All good. of your money that you sent to all the over taxes plus some of Beville's, Liverpool's, all those other districts that you were the same we're in competition with relative to getting people to move here and have a choice for a Swigo. So it's, it's money coming back. So we've then, all, like, we've all paid in for the city. Right. Right. So, like, would then would be that this is also in phases. So then the first phase, then once the first phase closes out, then we start to get reimbursed the, at the 60% able. Then does the second phase start right after that? Like, how does that all. I think the way the fiscal. Craig has probably better name on it than me, but I think the way the fiscal advisors worked it out is that one of the reasons the project is phased is because of the five year maximum cost allowance on each of the buildings, which I think we talked a little bit about last time around. You don't want to at any point be exceeding that cost allowance because then the aid yeah, is zero. Your money. It's all exactly. zero. So right. the phases were set up so that you would right. always be receiving uh, aid back on the okay. dollars that you spent. Right. So it, it, that was, I think that was pretty well worked out by uh, John Vick and his team. Yeah, that's what gave advisor. us the 15 That's why, plan. yeah, right. that's why, right. and, the, and the aid comes back to you over a 15 year period. Mm -hmm. But that five year window, if you exceeded the aid from the maximum cost allowance within that five year window, it doesn't matter what you spend, you're, you're not going to get any aid. Yeah, you're probably no. And the, and the, the, the aid rate, is somewhat flexible, right? Anywhere from 60 to high point, 67, 68 percent, right? Yeah, I mean, compared, and that will get reevaluated too. I don't know if it's right. So, but he says it tends to go up. Right. It, it all depends on our need, right? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. So you were close. Um, it's about for a 50 to 70 million dollar project, roughly 38 and change thousand. So the cost 38 to 40 thousand. The cost if you submit the whole 60 million dollar project at once would be about 38 uh, 38 to 40 thousand dollars. Okay, it's for them. What happens? Just based on how just on if, you get, if you get the approval, then you got you got to fast forward it. Otherwise, when they go to bid, they're going to say that. Nah. That was nine months now, right. it's a year ago, then all of a sudden everything goes up a couple more million, and then you're short. Yeah. Right? What do you what do you left at that? Well you keep in mind though, we we, we build in for contingencies and we build in for um, escalation as part of that number. So okay. we're, we're hoping to be if you're in front of the, if you're in front of your escalation cost, then hey, great. Right. Yeah, all of a sudden we're coming okay. back and say by we can do a phase six or whatever. Yeah. Okay. What do you, you know, what do you want to do with that? Right. Or not borrow it. Yeah, so right. Thank you. Very good. We did that. Yeah, right. It's all right. So we try to design for those conditions. Yeah, you plan for the 100 year flood. Yeah, exactly. But, it, but to, to your other point, Jim, in the event that you're short in a project, you have to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, what are we not going to do? Yeah. So that you're, if the voters approve it, a dollar amount to bond, that's all you have. Right. Yeah. So however it works out, so once you meet right. that, that number, then yeah. you're. Is that is that happened in projects before? I've never been a part of a project, so I can. It has happened. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's not there. not here, but <laughs> I don't think I've had. Well, it's happened here in the past. And what happens? Is just go back after the dollar amounts there, and then you have to cut. You have to something's got to get yanked. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, hopefully, at bid time, we have enough alternates, plus or minus, to be able to work contracts and move forward. So you'd have already you would have already thought about anticipating those anticipating what the bid market might be. Right. Because on bid day you really nobody in the room here has any control of no. what contract is going to be. So you set yourself up so you can be move forward regardless of how the bids come in. That's the intent. That would be the ultimate intent. Right. And we have cost control points. So when we submit to state that we review the numbers and the budget number and the price of that. And then when we get a bad pre bid, we'll usually work with a construction manager or consultant to reevaluate, look through the documents, provide a price before we go and commit. So we know, wow, we're, you know, 
we're a little over in this area and we're getting to do this as all units to see if we can get a competitive one. So we know that the 60.18 project today would be 62.5, so roughly over $2 million. So maybe it's time to have some conversation about what the board's interest is relative to the scope, whether we should continue to look at going out for a similar project as designed originally and marketed, or is there another way to go out with multiple uh, propositions for the voters to consider? Um, we'll be open up for that conversation. I know there was some, some, some talk about it at the last workshop, and, right. and I think that until we know what direction we're really headed, right. it's hard, hard to put dollar amounts on it. And I know Jim and I were talking previously. I know that at one point we had a specific, we, I know we have a specific dollar amount on the per building cost for the for the building work right. and a breakdown, of course, all the site work. Um, Do we have that in here? No, no. It's not in there, but we did have it. I, I remember, I just don't remember what any of the numbers were. Yeah, right. I wonder. I, I don't know how you guys feel if you feel like the voters would be accepting that the same project coming back. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. Right. I don't think so. Right. so that's not the first yeah. no. So let's say we can say, we're not doing that. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I, so can't, I right. guess I can yeah. offer up. So, what? I, Go ahead. Well, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of a it's kind of a big conversation really when you think about it because if we're going to take things off the table then what are we basing our decisions to take those certain things off the table on you know what i mean so it's a it, i think it is a, a big discussion i mean even like if you really look at say the most um extreme picture and i think like on a um information that i shared with you guys based on um enrollment per school in different districts and how many buildings different districts maintain and have and run um, that were slightly higher than other school districts. So would it make sense for us to look into some sort of consolidation and saying, you know, I don't know, whatever the number is for whatever school it is, just take that off and, and, and now go instead of having six school buildings, now we have, or sorry, seven school buildings, we have six school buildings, moving the sixth graders to the middle school and doing some shifting around and saving money that way, saving money long term. Like what is our future? What's our what's our long range plan here? And I feel like that's the step that I feel like we haven't really no, fully okay. talked about at all. The same no, like it's longevity is pretty specific on right. what's in front of So it. if we're looking at, you know, declining enrollment and we're looking at, you know, and then even just looking at response of um, the community to this vote generally. Is, is that something that they're thinking about? Like, huh, you know, why do we have seven buildings and Central Square has six, or Fayetteville Manly has six, and they have, you know, a larger enrollment than we do. So I think that those are things for us to really think about and, and do our due diligence when we're saying, what are we going to take off? I don't know. I just, well, I don't know. Do, do we need to take anything off or just present it in a different fashion? In the yeah. sense that, and I'm not talking about trying to to mislead but we remember we talked last time about how much of this is infrastructure and how much of this is is required and needed and, and by looking at it you know on their percentage wise i know it's not wouldn't be popular but it, the onus would be on us then to communicate it to the community that the athletic portion is this much give it as a separate separate item but they'll see if it's smaller if it's because the other stuff is going to need to be done you know at least if we're all right now i i think with the time that we're looking at, the longer we wait, the more it's going to cost us. Mm -hmm. So we've got to we've got to do those decision. things, right? And should you know our overarching plan as far as which school in, in terms of consolidation either play into this? Most definitely. Yeah. But I don't yeah. think we can avoid doing this, even the, the two and a half million, two point three million in the time from initial to now. But right. we can't wait. Well, um, that's, and I think to that, and I was going to ask you that question, and then Bob, will, I'll take your comment. The um, if something like that, like say, if we know that the first phase is going to be the high school late and then the middle school, like how would we address that? Like if, if we did make, make the, you know, I mean, I know like our policy on closing the school building is you have to form a committee, you have to do the research, blah, blah, which would all fall on us as board members to do. Um, but I think that's smart to do that. Like, but how would that fit into this time frame? Because if it 
was deemed that yes, it does make sense to move the sixth graders and close one of the elementary. Like, how would that first stage, well, you first, know? That I think the first phase would be all, all three of those schools figure in your picture long term anyway. So, first but phase. But I'm saying way. if we move the sixth graders, then there's going to have to be different changes to the middle school in order to accommodate Correct. that group. Of, yeah. So, that, that's what I'm saying is that there is going to be a, could potentially be a, yeah, that would that that would that that's yeah, a hindrance to right. the project that you're proposing. Right. Because right now we're looking at basically as say gutting and rebuilding the middle school as a um, reconstruction right. uh, infrastructure replacement of the systems that are outdated. Um, may or may not be used, uh, required, but if you are considering moving a grade level, there may be additions required. There may be other different types of reconstruction that you're gonna want SEDs input mm -hmm. on first hand. Right. It would also affect, you know, additions are aided a little differently than your renovations, reconstruction costs. So there's a lot more that goes into the modeling of it right. if that is the direction to go. Um, yeah. Now, not to say that if you didn't do that during the process, um, you would have to probably go for the voters for approval of doing have more different work, changing scope work uh, to that building, um, being able to have SED review it and then respond and react that way right so it's, it's always there it's just going to make it more difficult for the process but if you're doing phase one and you discover there's a facility in phase two you want to repurpose somehow or something like that i don't think if you're doing from there you're not going to have to pay or get you know you're not you're not putting your money into something and, not right. getting, and that's it's my worth concern is, is is not having a long-term you know vision or really us collectively talking about it and saying where are we going where do we want I mean this is a lot of money to spend so if we do it we want to do it in my opinion with that long-term vision in mind of where are we going and how are we going to best um, you know meet the needs of our students and our population and our community so I just think that they're all conversations that are important that we should to go to Tom's, Tom's point I don't I don't I'm not going to speak for you Jen but I wasn't talking about taking anything out of the proposed plan. I was talking about putting it out in multiple options. Um, well, that's that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Is putting it out the same Not way, asking off. for it. Yeah, Just putting um, out multiple referendums that where they could vote for different portions of the project. Yep. So yes. first we would put out the first phase and, and not even talk about that. How no, you might put it would put it out with maybe two or three different, you know, pieces. Yeah, approval like if pieces. You said, uh, these are the building needs, right? And it's X. And then this is the infrastructure and parking lot. It's X. This is the athletic complex. It's X. And then they'd have three or four or five. I don't know. We could break it into a number of different ways as to what the voters would be accepting of. Right. So it's like their priority list. It's their priority. Yeah. And, and the bottom, I, I mean, the majority of our stuff, and I'm going to agree with you and looking forward, but I think the most of the stuff, if, if it's specific to what you're talking about the middle school, is that most of everything we're doing is because we have to. Right. No, that I understand that. Yeah, I'm it, just saying if we're. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Like it's a bathroom thing or different right. yeah. amounts of bathrooms. They're there. Just do it. And now we're prepared exactly right. for the future. Yeah, that's my um, thought. It, and it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense if we can see that in the future for them, you right. know, to be a part of it. But if that's phase one, two, or three, then maybe we can, we can. I don't know if we have the opportunity to to change or or uh, resubmit if we wanted to. Uh, is the OMS was that in the phase one? Yes, it is. So it's, it's right off the bat. Kind of urgent, just yeah. because of the mechanicals and the life right. cycle. Right. I think was, I think a lot of it has to do with um, obviously our presentation uh, from step one that um, when we talked about the community clearly shot it down. We said a true statement. I mean, the vote was very minimal from of our committee, community, um, and it's not to say that others don't feel that way, but I think. You know, even to talk to some of the, you know, the new board members who, when they first saw maybe some of these drawings and this in the meeting, you know, some of the impressions you guys made is, I saw a sports field or I saw whatever. And then you talk to some of the general public when you're out there, 
and um, they'll talk about our overall general budget and then what's going to go. And then, as you just mentioned, there's other things somehow we have to figure that have to be fixed. Yeah. If it's not done this way, what's well, it's the lion's share of the budget, or the lion's share of the yeah, project. project. It's, it's necessity. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is. All right. So, what's the breakout of the? I think it was. I think it was like fifteen million to okay. forty-five. So I think that's what was lost so, in translation when you first put this out. When people didn't see that that was only that branch. And I heard that from that. Yeah, yeah. I heard that today. Was sure. And if you had multiple, you had multiple options on a ballot, yeah. and they knew that fixing all seven schools was going to cost forty-five million, and then and then maybe option two is site work, non-athletic site work. Which would be parking lots, yeah. Buck Boulevard, additional parking. Right. That's non-athletic site work. Option two, and then option three is athletic site work, which are the fields. Yeah. Is this amount? And then maybe when they see that it's forty-five million, you know, eight million and seven million, yeah. they they have a more. They I think they wanted a choice. They wanted options. Right. And it's just the. It was also that'd be only oh, sorry. Be one way to do it. Yeah. So, my name is Bob Ruggio. Uh, I have two kids in the district. Uh, I'm 100% in support of the capital improvement project. Uh, I'm a social media influencer, and a lot of the things that each of you are doing, I try to promote online. So, this last vote, I'll be up front. A lot of votes are pretty easy online. This vote was very difficult. Um, people would see a headline, and they'd jump on it, and there was a lot of toxicity around it. And and Tom mentioned it's not really about what it's kind of what Brian was saying it's more about how and it's about that approach and have it I guess my question is as a project manager is there a so you got a, a project team do you have a marketing team that's separate from the project team that's independently identifying all the stakeholders stakeholder mapping and then each of those target stakeholder groups needs to be addressed independently. So whether it's um, people at SUNY Oswego, the teachers, um, Exline Group, Novellus, Billy Barlow, um, you approach and have these meetings with each of them. So these social influencers are helping push this. Um, just within the district, I know from talking with teachers, um, Dean, I thought you did a great job going school to school to push it out. A lot of times in meetings, what you try to do is you have the meeting before the meeting, kind of grease the skids a little bit and get that feedback and then adjust things and then go back. What I heard from a lot of the teachers was you met, you pushed it out, but I don't know if their feedback was truly taken back and heard for some modifications because what they felt like was what was presented originally, they weren't they didn't think it would pass the vote like when they heard it. And so what happens is then it gets pushed out to the public for a vote. And I think it was Brian that just mentioned it. The voter turnout compared to other any other campaign was very, very low. And we don't even have our own teachers that we're trying to help them provide a, an environment. I mean, look at SUNY Oswego. How they invested just like we're trying to do and people want to go there we want people to want to go here but i mean we have teachers that are working in these conditions that didn't even go out and vote for their own project so what i'm getting at is you got a project team that's probably pushing and trying to sell not all the bells and whistles because we talked about like of the 60 million like 45 of it is essential and then you can break it out differently it sounds like you're going to come up with a different approach but you got to get the buy-in from the teachers and then those teachers go out and they sell four to five other people, 10 people, to get them to the vote to push this through. And um, the other reason I, I came tonight besides, you know, it's not the what, it's the how, um, I think there's a larger vision that's being missed um, with education. Um, about five years ago, I got involved with doing some um, initiatives around the city and helping out. And I quickly learned over time that um, education is um, the foundation of our community. And so this project here doesn't just impact um, 
the facilities that we have today, but it goes beyond that. And um, I don't know if this saying's already out there, but there's work here, live here, educate here, and play here. And what's happening is there's a lot of um, um, aging professionals in the industry that are moving on, retiring, we get millennials in, <clears throat> and they have, uh, they have families. And so they're going out and interviewing at Exelon, Novellus, Swigo Health, SUNY Swigo. They're coming in, and one of the biggest questions, well, families that are concerned about their children, two big questions that they try to answer besides looking at the housing stock is what's the educational system look like and how are their sports programs? And there's a lot of people that I've worked with at um, Novellus, Exelon, SUNY Oswego that choose to live 45 minutes away. They're happy driving here. They take um, revenue from our industry and they go back down to FM and spend that money in restaurants, um, sports, small businesses there versus staying here. What will attract them, and this is the last, I'm calling it the Keystone Project, this is one of the last pieces of the puzzle. SUNY Oswego is doing great. Exelon is doing great. Novellus off the charge. Um, City of Oswego, last five years, making big positive growth. This, this project here is the last piece of the ecosystem that I feel that brings and ties everything together. But the community, they see it as, you know, I think Tom might have mentioned it, they see like the sports piece of it, instead of, we, we talked about breaking it out. And um, they get caught up on that versus that bigger vision of what they're, what people are not realizing, and maybe this is where the marketing team comes in, it sells that bigger vision of, um, 10 years from now, the decision to do this all of a sudden starts changing these new workers that are coming in at Exelon. Their family chooses to live here because they do a tour of our schools and they're like, wow. Uh, they see our sports program and the tra track record. I know recently, um, as a social media influencer, I follow you guys on um, Facebook. And that public perception becomes reality. And there was a while that there is places like Hannibal, Central Square, Fulton. They told their story. They celebrated the successes of the teachers in the classroom, the school projects. And it made it look like, hey, we got something going on. And I think like in the last year, there's been a lot of tie-ins of those photography online. And when people and families share that, um, that's huge. Social media is actually, I mean, it's the quickest way to, to get in front of somebody and show people what we have going on. And um, it doesn't always have to be, uh, you know, that story of doom and gloom. I feel like we have a lot of human capital in these buildings that are very talented, giving back to the students, and we need to not worry about the what, because the difference between 60 million and now 62, um, it's the how. And I feel like if we don't have a marketing team to help us sell and package the story, and communicate it to these different stakeholder groups. Um, I don't like spending a lot of time spinning my wheels on stuff to help out um, teams. And uh, if we're just gonna go up for vote again and, and deliver that same package the same way we just did, um, that's not fair to, like I said, um, you know, I appreciate all the hard work you guys are putting in on it. I believe in it, but uh, I think we gotta focus on the how and identify those stakeholders and each one needs to be communicated with differently to ensure that when November rolls around, if that's when this is gonna be put up, that people are showing up at the polls and our own people, the teachers and the administration, they're showing up for the vote and influencing their friends and families. Get out and vote, this is a yes vote. It's an easy yes vote and it's bigger than just our school district. It's about community and so anyways, thank you. Thank you. I think that was a good point. I mean, I agree with yeah. all that. We, we have to yeah. get, that was our biggest fail was, I mean, yeah, you know, you went to, you know, all the schools and those presentations were great, but it's going beyond that and in really drawing in, you know, stakeholders, community members and leaders to do exactly what you're saying. And then it just keeps, you know, going out. I think that's, that's key. Because I, I did hear a ton of people who were like, I didn't even know about this. And like, and because we're immersed in it, it's like, yeah. how'd you not know about it? But the yeah. amount of people who said, 
business people who in town, they were like, had no clue that this was even going on. I mean, we're spending so. 60 million on a project of this size. A, a small chunk of it should be spent on the, the how piece. And there's really good marketing teams out there that can help us package it the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, like get in front of people in different ways and showcase where we're going. Is thank there? You. Oh, no, thank you. Is there a um, is there a social media aspect within the school that with the school district that we utilize? We have um, we have a subcontract with City for PR and marketing. Okay. We have we, PR and marketing team from both Did City utilize them on the last vote? Mm -hmm. Did. Yeah. And uh, okay. Because I'm just I think you're exactly right. This this thing is one and lost. Well, face right. to face. I think it was a one lost. track like. It was like a one-track marketing piece where it was like shoot once and try to hit a bunch of different demographics where it really needs to be like identify the stakeholder map niche market and how do we communicate effectively to each one of these groups to tell the story because each stakeholder you know they say what's in it for me and each person's got a different value where i i appreciate the sports aspect of it and the rest of it but some people don't appreciate the sports aspect but like how do we how do we target that demographic of a fixed income retiree that might be, need to be sold a different um, message? And we're able to get those demographics to have mailing pieces just to them. Maybe they'll want to invest in the next generation, but they should be. Well, they need to because it's a long term. Again, we always speak about the fabric of the community, you know, and, and the more people that it keeps here and reigns, that fabric becomes tighter and it's more effective down the line. But I think if that's something we have to act actively pursue is the social media aspect and get out message, simplify the message, and make it so, you know, more more, more into the marketing strategy. Yes. Right. And do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think we do have to, again, people see with their eyes, and that's what we saw. They didn't see that. They saw this. Yeah. And, and the assumption was we're putting a $60 million uh, athletic stadium, which is yeah. uh, totally wrong. But that's what that's they saw. Yeah. So our challenge is, I, and I think if we break it down into give them the choice, but again, the onus is on us to market it significantly and successfully so that they see that that's just a smaller part of it. Yeah, you can capitalize on looking right in their own room. That to pick out my friend Rhonda back there, but I remember when um, Rhonda was hired last year, one of the persons that I remember her in a meeting saying that she was proud to be a Buccaneer and she was coming back to the community and she moved back here to be an athletic director. And that's like a message right there. I mean, saying you're a graduate of Silicon High School, correct, Bob? Yeah, I mean, these are people who grew up and along the line, most of us. Anyways, um, you know, it, it's, uh, I think it's part of a message that we can put out there that people as well is what is because we do have different demographics of where we're coming from and what we're reaching out to um, as to how do we how do we possibly reach some of those? Uh, how, do you, how are you successful in selling it? Right, right. It, in selling it has well, a negative connotation, but it presenting yeah. presenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have presenting? two. I have two examples. So, like this art that you see here, it's on the website, but it's not on social media. Literally. I mean, you just get JPEGs or PNGs of these to sh just share one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a single post. That they shouldn't have to, when you look at your funnel, they shouldn't have to go way down to find something. Like, literally, it should be right on social media, like Oswego County today. They can, I think they have had these on there. Yeah. But um, another example is like, so for, I mean, social media is new, um, but you can reach a lot of people with your message. I, you started using YouTube with online video you get 15 to 30 seconds before you lose somebody's interest and I thought you did a great job with YouTube video but it took like two three minutes to get to you showing you know the damages and it was that like somebody's gonna fall asleep in that first two three minutes and then once you got to the meat of it it was like wow like look at all like but it needed to be like it almost needs to be just like Start showing that in like a, you know, like just like you're right in the face, right? right? Yeah. You know, no lead in, just yeah, you know, like a hundred and twenty seconds, like, yeah. but like by showing those vis visuals, it was like touring a home. You know, you're looking at the damages versus like trying. I know you tried to tell the story up front. Yeah. People know where we're at. You just show them yeah. like, 
you know, there's a leaky roof. It's like, you just walk them through the damage versus like, I think we lost some people in that. And I know your attempt at it was like good, but like you only get 15 to 30 seconds before you it's lose. Fine. It's difficult. It's yeah. difficult to do that, to tell them about all the stuff that's wrong and no, which is going to take to do it. you can show people the damage yeah. versus them like clicking the button and they're off and next thing you yeah. know your views are low. Oh. Yeah. I get it. I get it. You're not going to hold somebody there for 30 minutes or whatever. you got 15 seconds to get here. So where are we relative then to breaking it up and putting it out right. in, in, uh, in just referendum that they could vote on that? How do we feel about that? Yeah, we have to go back to that. And keeping it as if we were to keep it as is, but just re <coughs> reapportion it in terms of what they'd be voting on. Because um, another part of that, Jim, that we were talking about with the infrastructure aspect was a portion of that that will be going to the athletic portion anyway, right? right. Phase one, phase two, so that I, the analogy I made the other day, it said it's the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure the cake is great underneath, yeah. and that, that icing is, is minimal. But that's what everybody's seeing. So well, it's also going to be the, put it that's the least expensive part too. It is it's right, the smallest that, portion. Right. So I mean, the, the presentation yeah. of that, we break it out so it's one a little bit smaller for two, but right. three is the least. Yeah, that, that would be a, a yeah. good approach yeah. to one way. This yeah. marketing team that you work with, yes, are they? I'm assuming these guys are the infrastructure team. Like that team, I feel like they should be doing this exact same thing in demonstrating to maybe a smaller focus group of teachers and they present the pitch that this is what we're gonna to sell to teach. Like this is your, what do you think? And they go back and adjust it. Like make them work for you guys. Like versus you feeling like you gotta guess, save the world. Guess on what you're like pitching. make, right. and they come in, and the, bring in a little subset of business leaders. We're gonna sell this to the community at your level, can you help us sell it? And they give you a little bit of feedback on it or vomit all over it or whatever, you know. Yeah. But then you tweak it, but let the city marketing group own that. They go back, bring me another rock. It's not gonna work, because when November comes around, I want a yes vote. And they might have 15 different stakeholder groups with 15 different types of messages, but that's their job. I mean, it's too big of a project to leave it. I don't feel awkward, sir. What's that? You feel awkward? No, it's all right. Oh, is that you? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, no, no, no. but, but she's, she works for that department. Okay. But I know the work that you guys do for other districts, and the stuff you're doing here is good, but we're coming on a boat that's $60 million. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, know, you need to bring target that. Yeah. The message has to really there, there are so many yeah, different stakeholders too. It's too big of a project. Yeah. It's bigger than the, the district, like I said. It's like, we need people to show up at the polls. Yeah. Greg and Jim, what do you see in other districts and communities that have projects of this size? Are you seeing marketing firms coming in? Well, it's Liverpool, for yeah. example. I mean, some of their, one of our clients, maybe more, hired a marketing team out of the city. Uh -huh. In New York Plus, City. New York City. Uh, to help them with. Yeah. And it's one of the people you mentioned in terms of your competition for people so they don't drive 45 minutes mm -hmm. to work in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, so that and the people have gone that far. There are others that have definitely used the uh, either city yeah. or, yeah. or similar. Similar yeah. facilities with other folks in the region. I, I think I, I just listening to the conversation. Here's some of the challenges that you have. You know, just take these as pure facts for a minute. November 15th, and I'm just going to pick that date as a potential vote date. I, I know it's not, I'm just not using it as to demonstrate timing. So if the vote date was November 15th, uh, I don't know if you discussed that or not, but if it was November 15th, the decision to this level, in other words, the board needs to pass. Can you, you're okay. Are you guys okay? Yes. Um, yeah. 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 I'm struggling right? with my um, good ear. You need to have your resolutions in line 45 days plus at least a week or so, depending on what your uh, papers are, your legal papers are. I don't know if they're daily or weekly, but 45 days plus a week. So that puts you somewhere prior to October 1st. Uh, so I don't know what the last board meeting is in September. Mm -hmm. uh, that's four weeks away. Right. Uh, yeah. Just weeks to give you a perspective on right. the if timeline. you're thinking that. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the what if. The sure. legal, legal path. That's right. the that's mm -hmm. short legal path to get to a vote. 
So your board, the last board meeting or the only board meeting in September, you had to pass those resolutions. Piece the advertisement in the paper, first advertisement in the paper 45 days before November 15. And just, that's just demonstration. So obviously before you do the resolution, sorry about the how for a minute, because he's right, you need to know what the what is. What are you going to put out to the voting and what means scope for a big budget? At, at a minimum. Uh, I think from a, from the seeker side, the resolution, I don't know if you check with, with the folks in voted, but it's probably still good. Uh, those are typically good for you know upwards of 10 years, assuming you're not going to increase the scope. If you put the exact same scope right. out, your seeker resolution is good. It's still got that problem. We're certainly good. diminishing what we're yeah. What are yeah. If, you're back, if you're pulling back a little bit, you're still fine. So that's just a timing perspective. Well, to put out what we're talking about, what you're, you're saying to break it down? It, well, into breaking it down is a, is a, I mean, the caveat I would just warn you in there is if I'm a voter and I'm walking to the voting machine and I see multiple options, Tough thing is again, maybe you can do it on with appropriate um, advertising and social media. Is one of those needs to be the base project, and the others are if A passes, then B, then C. But if B before C, how, how do you how do you how do you describe that as someone who? You got to hit the It's difficult. They can only pass it. Yeah, they're going to. The previous one needs to pass in order for yeah, the subsequent ones to pass. Yeah, that's refine or right. describe easily. So again, not that it has yeah, that time because we have had plenty of people do that in yeah. this market. Where they I, put I up a base project, I'll make something up, they put up all the infrastructure, however you define that. And then pro Proposition B is the turf on top of the infrastructure. Right. You're basing on the cake, right? As you described now. Fix all the drainage, you fix all the curb, you fix all the sidewalk, you fix all the parking, and then you put the turf in lieu of natural grass on XYZ field. But again, that, that creates two things. One, if you're not marketing the how, as this gentleman behind us described, and that's an easy no go. Right. Yeah. Because they'll, 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 you probably might all agree that the, the infrastructure is needed. So, so other districts, sorry Ron, I won't get into you, but other districts that have had fit. You probably might all agree that the infrastructure is needed. So, so other districts, sorry Ron, I won't get into you, but other districts that the districts use, will they go out for their priority item first, which for us is our buildings, well, and just go for that? And then, or avoid the scale that you just that described. Scale back. We have to, however you want to define they yeah, define right. as the athletic side. They scale the path because initially they were going to put in three or four turf fields. They have smart backs. So they took that out. They did some other field improvements, you know, tennis courts, basketball court, parking, drainage, curves, but they pulled back on the amount of turf fields. But I think it's also a bigger story there. that played into that though too is because the bleachers they, they had a um, ADA uh, department of you know yeah. complaint against because they weren't ADA accessible. Right. They had to do something with them because of retrofitting them and having them warranted. And so there's a yeah. it built up really, really kind of well to the end result, which is all right. We're not doing all these turf, but we have to do the bleachers. Everybody in the mother has turf, and, and we are a heavy competitor in football. You know, the boosters and everybody getting behind that. So it was. It was again another social media where you know the coaches and everybody were linked, um, but they still put it out as one project. They just yes, reduced. They the just end, took away one. Yeah, so it would have been it like what we brought last week when we kind of scaled back those elements right. as opposed to this. Start looking and they at said, you know how what much of a things. reduction did they make? Yeah. They had three. They had, I think, they didn't have a baseball, but they had a, um, a, a secondary lacrosse field, and then and that was behind their bleachers, and then the main stadium. Um, geez, I don't know. I could find out that. I'm just curious. I mean, we're talking about for 
taken away everything that we had previously planned to, to what you guys presented last two weeks ago, six million bucks, roughly 10%. Well, what that what that was doing when we took those away, we're getting rid of the Stadium. artificial turf on baseball and softball, but we're going to keep on soccer fields. What, and, and then the stadium went away, and we went to a three-lane track, and we didn't have. Yeah. I mean, it was right. It but, was, but what we could do is get rid of. You know, if you're looking at repackaging that and trying to keep it similar. You know, baseball and softball could be sodded fields and maybe a second boat is to add artificial turf to those so you're getting the basic what you need what you really want and the icing on the cake would be to turf those and then instead of doing say the track with the field inside of it you have two <coughs> you know just rectangular play fields that are sized for games practices everything else so they don't see otherwise the public is seeing two running tracks for the school district and they're really warranted so i think that through it, through it for a loop too is you're showing you know multiple tracks you really need that multiple tracks and then put the multi-purpose field down the Ron, did you have point. Point. Yeah. yeah yeah just a couple things i've been involved in two capital projects before one at uh cicero north syracuse and then also one at and uh splitting them up is sometimes a good thing but the research shows that it's not because everybody always wants a yes vote and then always everybody always says well 50 50 i'll say yes to this one and no to this one because then they feel like oh, okay well at least i gave a little to then poo poo another little so i don't know if that's a direction you want to go in but there is statistical data on that um and then the other thing i was thinking of was the fact that like like you said and we talked last time after the last meeting was that you know the 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 safety portion of the middle school track needs to be attended to without it actually being like athletically inclined. We use that for sports, but it's also used by the community, several community members that go out there and, and walk. Um, and it's almost to the point of being unsafe. So that's <laughs> kind of a safety thing. And then you wouldn't need the track because a lot of communities now are doing that walking path. So, you know, you go around and you kind of put a little stake in the ground and you're 0.25 miles. And it, you can still get what you want from it, but you also, also then promote kind of people actually seeing the space that we have and embracing that versus walking around a circle because people get bored with that. But then if you move the, the um, instructional slash artificial surface space over to where Wilbur is right now, does that save without having the track around it, having totally getting rid of the track because you don't need it because we'll have that walking path. Mm -hmm. Does that help? I don't know what the cost savings on that is, but. The other point that's, that's made is what happens if you split out the turf or, or in the case of the original process, you see the two baseball fields that were turf and they loaded down. How do you ever come back with it? Or even if it's took out all of the icing and if all natural grass fields and the community blows it down, how do you come back and say, well, we want to put it back up? So it's just a, what, what's, what's that say from a, from a public relation? Well, I think for the amount of money that we're saving to take everything out, it's not worth it. It's short sighted to me. I mean, I think yeah. we just do it all and or do as much as we can that yeah. makes sense for us to try to save a couple million dollars in the grand scheme of things. It's like, we're going I don't think I heard. I don't, I'm sorry. The other, well, let me, one other comment. We kind of talked after the last meeting and said, how many, this, this is just a, again, a piece, of, piece of information. How many districts have we worked with that have more than one turf field of any kind? Not many. That have just one turf field? Not, not many. There are not many school districts that have more than one turf field okay, of any kind. I was going to ask that too at the last meeting. I was wondering how many times yeah, typical, typical yeah. JUCOs and, and yes. four-year schools have. Yes, but, but the high red. Yeah, like junior colleges, JUCOs, and then the four-year colleges have multiple turf fields. But high schools have one, and then the practice fields and the other. Corey thought there might be a few Western, far Western, Western, Webster, nothing. Yeah, nothing in Rochester. Nothing in Rochester. Nothing in Rochester. I don't think I heard anybody on the board at your last presentation that didn't like the revised <coughs> plan. I think what we didn't like is the impact on the dollar amount having given so much up. Right? Okay. 
if it just didn't seem like there was much of a payoff. I, I thought it would have been more, but your explanation is the infrastructure yeah. that that needs to be done to repair the grass fields that For would exist. Uh, that that cost is still there. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, that I was, was also not doing like the dugout. So I mean, the simple things like that that I'm like, geez, like, can Those we at least get a dugout? You know, that, and, yeah. yeah, you're going to build a new baseball field. So there's no dugout. And, yes, so yeah. I mean that's no right. Yeah, it doesn't. So if you if you have a field the turf field over at where Wilbur is with no track around it, and then maintain the two softball fields where they currently are, and then is that the something that you're that thinking was or that was well, the land they okay. yeah, that's, that's what got they there. wouldn't keep the softball field over there, know. correct? Right. Okay. So what I Karen's making copies of it right now, but after the last meeting, I I took this and made a couple revisions to it and. One was, if we got rid of the, the track and field here, we can have no sodded, and you can fit a 225 by 360 sodded field and a 225 by 330 sodded field right here. So you've got two full-size soccer fields, one full-size for soccer, one full-size for football. So you've got a lot of practice space here on it that's maximizing. Another one that we then took was, because this track is only 195, or that field is only 195 by 360 and useless pretty much. I took this footprint and put it up here. Took this parking and was able to put it here, gain more parking than down here. So that way you could leave one softball field playing this way, one softball playing this way, right. but rehab those fields to improve the drainage, improve the planarity, backstops, all of that. So that this could still see the softball area, and you went, and then this would basically be left as play field that is now. Um, so that's what Karen's making copies of. If you guys would look at it. But that being said, though, correct me if I'm wrong, but then the baseball field was just going to be infrastructure. That's correct. Baseball field, I, I got it. That's yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Moving in closer to the school, replacing dugouts, backstop. Morning track all around it, so it's basically this same footprint. It's just that it would be sodded and natural grass and instead of artificial. Yeah. And new dugouts and new correct. correct everything else. Basically, correct. would be all new, all new infrastructure. So for these, really, I mean, that would be yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. If you're talking about like a sacrificial lamb, almost that it's doing turf. those it's turf would while it's warranted and it's it's definitely needed for the amount of teams that you have practices everything else on the fields. I would say it's probably a lower priority and you know rather than as opposed to getting your main field to be turned but that could be something you could appease with the, with the community and say listen this is the plan these are infrastructure things that need to be done we, we go through that narrative and then maybe the option is you know you have the main project as your primary uh, proposal and then the secondary ones are well, instead of natural grass how about artificial turf on field one or field two, you know, the, that way you're giving them options, but you're not negating the scope of the work that is required by by the infrastructure. Um, and so you're kind of changing everything. We're having more and more groups that are using utilizing what we currently have. So I know that for full size, I know the collaboration that we've had with the Little League has been great this year, where they've come over a couple times to play because they need access to a full size field. So I think their support would be there, and, and if we did it properly through social media we could have them kind of get the word out as well. But I do also know that we created a good working relationship with that company that took over the Legends field because they utilized our field for a tournament that weekend. Yeah. And they just raved about how wonderful the staff was, how great the fields looked, and they would also then be in tune of also helping to support that kind of a thing. So, you know, those are two entities that in the past, I, they've been maybe neutral, um, but now they're, they're really excited about having this as an opportunity the other the other option is just i don't know where this i heard two big businesses mentioned one of the communities first turf field they did one individual who was a higher up in one of those companies paid essentially paid the local share uh, actually paid for the turf over a period of time to get their first turf field so it was like the CEO or the president, he was embedded in the community, been there for a long time. 
raised his hand and said, and be, so they put the turf up in that scenario as option, no cost to the tax thing. And it, and it passed, and he bought it. Where, where, where are we at impactful to the taxpayer's contribution at what you're pitching here? For that, that we need to bring fiscal on board. So when we start, uh, so the, the model that we're going to hand out, and I'll show you, we're about, with the escalation on the previous amount, we're about 57 to $58 million. That's the value of one term. And that basically, well, we'll have to walk through it while they see it, but that basically took the turf off the two baseball fields, got rid of the um, parking down below, got rid of the stadium, forgive me, the uh, multi-purpose field um, down below, and the track was the field. Put the so you parking the jumper court. You, you're at 57, yeah. taking away the two turf fields, baseball, baseball and softball, and, and so we're not even saving six million. The only reason we're saving six million is because the price increase went six to five, so now we're at fifty-seven. Sixty-two if you put up, you put up what you had, you get close to six million. Put the exact same thing up. So you three different drawings. You're at 57. Just pay attention to all of them. So when you place it, yeah. okay. when you place it, that will take the pops up. I'll go over what you're trying to do. Okay. Make sure you get, because there's no ABC on the class. So, okay. 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 so yeah. if everyone turns to page so what what that's showing is an example of how we had done a Penn Station fitness trail and then the red and the blue were actually markers in the pavement and it scaled off one mile two mile and it circled on back on each other so that way if you had um, you know if you got rid of the track for example and you were still creating something for the community to have markers that's one way that you could do it. So that's the main reason for that one. This one with the two fields side by side where the track used to be, it's kind of what, um, this is what I had kind of come out of last meeting thinking is that, you know, maybe there was no reason for the track. They could do two sided fields there, side the baseball, side the softball, and then you're going to keep everything behind um, the high school the same. And then the last one was something that Craig and Jim and I had a meeting the other day and we were just kind of brainstorming and it came out as to could we move that field up there, redo the parking and keep the softball in the same location. And, th and that's kind of what that's showing. It's one turf field, um, creates 178 parking spaces additional. It's still got to pull off for four parking spaces for buses um, right along the field side so teams could drop off. They could use that for baseball, softball or the multi-purpose field. Um, so it's just another option to look at where kind of a different plan and it's but it's also still overall improving what you have. When you do these um, CAD drawings, are you able to do 3D uh, like flybys like through the facility? We take these and we can put them in a SketchUp and do 3D um, fly through. So if we had one that was set that you wanted to see, we could actually simulate either flying through or walking through. Um, so we could set it if we did a walking trail through there, let's say, as to what that person would see taking advantage of that. Because I feel like, um, this is again from an outsider, I think the public, this over here looks like third world country that we're trying to solve this, but over here we've got a Ferrari going in. But I have a friend that, um, I have a friend that's, um, he's an architect and he does uh, multi-million dollar skate parks around the world one of the selling points besides the CAD to get the public involved is um, doing the, the flybys and I, I felt like historically for the last vote this was it like it was like 
yeah, this was sold, but this was like kind of quiet on the sly. Where literally, like this whole conversation, I know you guys are trying to iron out the scope, but like we're spending a lot of time on the Ferrari piece, even though we know that's going in. But if, if we're gonna be selling the Ferrari, like sell the Ferrari. She'll, you know, for you to do, you know, an MPEG for her, and she puts it on there, we're gonna fly by, but now people realize, like, wow, look at this. This is the future. Like, versus just a static post. I don't know. So, but like, don't, don't not sell it. Like, if we're gonna sell it, sell it. Don't hide the Ferrari with a blanket over it and be like, pay attention to this stuff over here. That's what it felt like publicly. And then nobody showed up to the boat. But if we're gonna do it, let's, I guess, really pimp it. No, so no, I just want the, the track thing. And Bob, I agree with you. Um, but with the with the track thing, like I get your like with the walking. I think that that's a, a cool idea too. My only concern um, is that we have a high school track team and we have a middle school track team, and they're at the same time. Does that are we are we limiting again? our long range plan and, and going forward by saying maybe we don't need a track in here and I, and I only say that because you think about you know as kids go go through school and you know we um they it's like a uh milestone you know you go to middle school and now like oh i'm on i'm on you know playing modified sports and i'm in the middle school and you know and then they go to high school and now like wow this is a big deal now i'm playing down at the high school like are we taking that experience away by saying no, we don't need a track, and we'll just bust the kids up to the middle school. Like, again, I'm just trying to think of like. Typically, schools just use the one, just because it's track and field. So you're not going to duplicate field events because it gets really kind of pricey. Yeah. Um. So that's where the the actual field space that's out of the middle school is conducive to be able to having that. Okay. And there's not that many home track meets just because you do one once or twice a week, but usually you're away. Okay. So it works where we have in other schools do this as well where you right out of the gate because um the middle school students are right there at school you get them into their practice and then the, the varsity kids come over but the varsity kids then help out with middle school kids because there's so many of them right so they help them with the high jump and the pole and the different things that the kids are exposed to and then when those kids go to leave our kids have already done their warm-up by helping out the kids and then they have their practice and that's how a lot of schools do it just because of the field event portion of it okay so okay. so have you got sticker prices to go with each of them <laughs> no but we can work those up i mean they're still basically with the give and take they're still um between 56 57 9, 58 it's just your habit. So no matter what, in whatever we choose in these three, we're anywhere from 56 to 58. Uh, with the exception of the original scheme, yeah. that was kind of okay. just taking away the turf. That was probably still a little over six million because of the escalation. Okay, I'm going to ask Rhonda another question. So looking at these and seeing how, um, and I know we talked a lot, I Kathleen had some points about baseball in fields. To go to something like this one here, with the one baseball and the, is that is 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 this gonna work for what we have? It'll work um, because we do utilize the little league fields that are over at the fort, and we also then have access because we use those fields. We have access to the cages. I mean, would it be nice to have everybody on campus? Yes. Do we have the real estate to be able to do that? No. Um, I don't even know if you could take, you know, you can't take a softball field and make it universal between a softball and baseball field just because of the difference of it. Um, but because those fields over there, we, when we have a game that's over at the fort, we then maintain that and take care of it. But like I said, it gives us access to the batting cages, so which is a good thing. Um, and without having two baseball fields, which we don't really have the real estate to be able to do that, um, what we do and a lot of the schools do is when our varsity is home, our JV's away, and then they just vice versa. So that's how we do it. So without knocking down some buildings and grabbing more green space to be able to do that, 
you know, this is a great scenario and having that great rapport with the city, it enables us to use wonderful fields and then also kind of show the little league kids as they start, like this is where you're gonna play as well, but then you come over to the varsity field, so. So the plan that we originally went out with, that one if we did it now was going to be 62, 62, and, a 62 and a half million with the escalation. This one has a turf field, correct? Correct. Yes. And this, and you said that the cost now would be 58? No, that was about 61. This would be 61. So you're saving about $650,000 in artificial turf and I'm taking it off the baseball field, and then you take it off the softball, it's another 650000 okay, So yes. you're saving about a million, two, million, three in the artificial versus the reconstruction that still has to be done. Okay. And then, yeah, no, you're right. And then even the two where it's got the two fields, one on top of the other, because there's a cost associated with removing the track and that space, the track is kind of taking up three quarters of that, the elevation changes. So you got to redo, you still got to grade off some, redo all the utilities and the infrastructure underneath that. So that's why those fields are still, still have a cost associated with them. It's not like you can just remove the asphalt, put the seat down, and you're good to go. They've got to be right. right. The, uh, the infrastructure cost is where all the money seems to be. Oh, yeah, there's yes. miles of okay. pipe underneath. Field. That's right. That and the asphalt is your main cost. Now, and I think you, I think you asked this question last time. Is the same? Um, I forget the term you guys used. The, the drainage that has to because of the extreme flooding that we have right here in this corner. Right. It's the bladders. The bladders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is the same thing going to go underneath? Like, say, for example, with this one here, if we did this this way, or yeah, without putting the turf here, would that same bladder system still have to go underneath these softball fields? It would go underneath the turf and parking and new parking areas. But it wouldn't go if we left. If we did this one here, no. it wouldn't. You wouldn't Correct. do it. Oh, I'd have to do. If we did that scenario there, I would have to do one, and it would probably be underneath the expanded parking to the down on the bottom of the sheet of the artificial turf field. Right here. Uh, yes. Right here. Correct. Yeah. 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 So oh, the right. drainage from here would have to go to this parking lot. Okay. But and not to the extent it would be if you had it under the turf field. Correct. For, yeah, the, for the softball field, that's correct. Right, right now, it's, it's, it's lawn. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to lawn, so what we would do in like that area is redrain it, put in some piping and structures to help manage it. Yeah. Some, but we wouldn't have to do a big ladder system. Right. Okay. What are you saying is that because of the reduction of the covering of the natural storage, the ladder system gets to be a little bit smaller. Because it doesn't have to. Because it doesn't have to do the work that would have to do with gotcha. the. Like I mean, the, I personally, because that, that's always been a problem in my in concern in my head is that, I mean, when that floods down there, I mean, that's, yeah. that's massive flooding. Uh, so, I mean, it's crazy. So, yeah. to me, I kind of like this one because I like that, I mean, I don't know. That's my personal because I don't like the, the flood. It just seems extremely problematic. So well, the, the other flood. thing that can be done on that one is. Kind of where it does flood, one of the biggest things that people like to see is literally just putting in areas for water to collect on purpose. That gives us that whole triangle wedge yeah, that's what I noticed. that you know we can dig that out and use that for right. stormwater management, you know, and release that water slowly. So it wouldn't have to be an underground storage system, but we can create one on the surface. Yeah. It's we we know the reality of it is. You're fine managing your stormwater runoff on yep. site. Right. It's uh, the rest of the communities okay. that's right. dumping into yes. that. Yes. So whatever we do will help mitigate, but it will not yes. eliminate that until the other issues are correct. Right. Yeah. Would there be an elevation change on this option as well at Utica and Hillside? If we redo all these fields, yeah. would there be an elevation change? We'll adjust the there was one for the stadium. Right. There was. Right. We'll yes. adjust up for the yeah. park. Right. And, then all of that. and that contributed yeah. to the problem with the with the flooding. 
or the corrective action toward the right. 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 That's what I mean. It, it, it will not be the same magnitude. Yeah. Right. Okay. It will not be to the same magnitude as when the other was proposed. Yeah, right, because you just don't have the asphalt, you don't have a retaining wall, it's just the fields, it, it, it's just, it, yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have the protection that you get from a retaining wall and asphalt because it's the, the water from the street that is it's coming, it's not the school's problem, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's coming down the side. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, every, every direction. Cory, on this option, I don't see fencing along Utican Hillside. Uh, we didn't have fencing in there to begin with. Fencing was just on Pearl Street and Hillside. I mean, way I can extend it down. I can do anything we want with fencing. But didn't we? Um, yeah, we have fencing. Didn't we on what the land we went up to voters on? Yes, because they had fencing around the actual facility. That's right, around the turf. Not, yeah. Oh, around the, the street, the, not around the property. The multi-purpose. Yeah, around that. The field itself, but not including the park. So this way, the fencing stops here. Yes. Yes. This is all over here. But I mean, that, I mean, that's something we could have. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, we can't have the fencing we have now. It's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, no, we, the, the budget that I carry, I've got enough in fencing that it would be able to do that in your area if you need it. Now, I, I forget, is there um, concessions? We have concessions built yeah, into this? Yeah, it's a well, we're on the new side of the scene. Yeah, it's the original. Right, the yellow well, square. All these, all these uh, proposals um, allude to being able to renovate a portion of Layton oh, to support that, that, so it's an internal alterations for yeah. team locker rooms, toilet rooms, referee locker rooms, um, and a concession link. We have an existing concession, which I think is going to probably disappear as part of this process. Think, yeah, we could keep it in like in this scenario, but this one, that existing building is kind of at the end of where those bleachers would be. So it'd have, it'd have to go it's, under this one. It's so dollar for dollar, and that was one of the big impact items okay. that was on the original referendum because we were fitting out underneath the bleachers with this right, basically right. dollar for dollar space. Right. You know, to try to utilize that, that large volume of so now we have two more options, really, which sort of complicates it. Because we have two more options that don't provide significant savings. No, that's what I was just going to go over. Our contribution from the district was $4 million of our fund of fronts. Yes, $4 was, million from the capital reserve. So right. we, had, we had $4 million from the from capital reserve. It was a 60 dollar project and the impact of the fund there was 32 cents per 38 dollars per dollar No. no. Okay. But let me no add, matter what we pick here, unless we we <coughs> drastically cut something or or amp up our contribution. Then I, I don't. The, the, the well, community doesn't have that much of a difference. Well, keep in mind it's a, it's about a five million, five to six million dollar swing from the original scheme. Right. So there's step one because the escalation or anything kept it closer to that sixty, but it was actually a bit of a five million dollar swing from the deductions and different types of school parties. Okay. So that's number one. Number two. The aid ability, if you look at the presentation, I think they were figuring there was about 88% bond over um, aided work. 88. It was about 88. Oh, 88% 88 of the work is able. Was That's able. right. Yeah. Okay. Now you're also, because you're not doing the bleacher fit out, you're not doing the, uh, some of the other things that were almost one to one items, now you increase that 88 to above the 90 range. Okay, and that's something fiscal will look at our scope and they'll make it a, a conservative estimate of where that will go. So that helps. So now you're you're getting more of your aidable work aided. More, more percent, than a higher percent. 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 Correct. Correct. Okay. And okay. that's based on, you know, we also have, fiscal's also evaluating <coughs> because statewide, everybody's building a issues, but adjusted. Right. You were due for an adjustment. What that value is, I don't know. But that will play a part of that too. So when you start looking at that thirty-eight dollars, it's not like we can make a linear 
deduction based on it. I know. That's what I want. So if you think you think one or two of these is reasonable, we can model that and then yeah. give it to fiscal, yeah. and then they can model it to the current. Um, so you can't state. tell me that take two million dollars off and it takes away I, twenty dollars. I tried doing that. I yeah. kept yeah. going in circles. Unfortunately, right. yeah. that's yeah. why they get more money. I have another question. I just thought you were talking about concessions and there was something else that made me. Um, the, oh, so real quick, I know we talked about this months and months ago because I brought up the we should have concessions in Layton for basketball and volleyball. So that is something that is added That's in there. Okay, so that will all be done along with the locker rooms and the rest rooms and all that we first Correct. needed. Um, so my question is this, and I think one of you guys touched on this. Let's say that we get into this and say um, a business, an organization, an individual, whatever says, you know, I want to um, buy all the scoreboards and donate them to the school. Or someone says, uh, well, we really need a concession stand. I'll put, put up the money for the concession stand. How does that work in this? Like, how do, like... I don't think it's an issue, but they could just... They could just... Is it going to happen? before the vote? And you can use it offset both the share. You could, you'd have to get somebody to sign like a memo of understanding that they're going to commit with a positive vote to do X. It happens after what, what the people have voted on is the maximum, maximum expenditure, and they voted so on, that's eight, it. on they told them that tax and tax is going to be X. Somebody contributes the scoreboard, and the tax and tax is going to go down. So it doesn't, it's not going to So be, basically you're not spending that. We're just not, yeah, it's like a, it's a gift. So you we either, money we have to spend correct, either you don't borrow it or you put it in other, yeah, it's going to impact your, you know, that sure is down the road. Yeah, right. Okay, I just wanted to, because I'm sure that there's people out there that would want to, you know, like when I was at um, Liverpool, I know their uh, scoreboard, yep. you know, has all the people who, who paid okay. for the scoreboard. I mean, every different school, so it's like, I'm sure there's people out there that would want, you know, their name on something and they're, you know, giving it to the school. So I just wanted to ask that. Yes, now, so is there a space to build a concession stand? Yes. Here somewhere, so that if that option did arise. We, we originally had, had some little ghost blockouts for areas okay. for future buildings if the okay. district went that way. We took them off because we didn't want to add to right, the conversation right. more. No, I mean, yeah. I think that I think those are all. Yeah. The one thing I will tell you from going to many different schools, you guys can probably say too, that we such a steady department. We've all been school big general over here too. So maybe you're playing over here. Right. Wherever he is. Yep. Yeah. 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 So what can we do to help the conversation? <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to mention one other thing. So if you recall, we were only using $4 million to offset the local share from the capital reserve. Um, we were putting in more money at the end of this year, so that's going to be a larger chunk that we would have to offset the local more, share. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'd like to know what the investment from the school district is to the payoff yes. to the community. Right. That's, what I, that's why I wanted to do that math. Yeah. I can't get that mad. No. So, uh, are there two options or one option you would like us to explore to that level and work with the school advisors and Nancy to kind of give you at least answers to those questions? Well, do you want a turf football field? I think is one is because this one does not have turf. Every yeah. option. No, 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 this one does have turf. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All I did. It's just changing the location. I think really to be fair, I think what they need to see is what is the cost on these alternative plans relative to what the escalated cost is on the original one. Right. Because and what are we getting for that amount of money? Right. If we're saving five million dollars but we've taken Ten critical items off the original plan is that a good value? Right. Because marketing is a whole separate piece that they we have to talk have about. To think about how you're going to do that after you get. And to it may piece. not matter, right? If we're selling sixty-one that. million or fifty-seven million, if we do it right. I'm going to answer Craig's question for you to see if it makes, makes sense. Tell me if I'm wrong. It's spinning your thinking about 
we can price, we can hit, we can run with what, you, what um, Andy just said, uh, with what we're hearing from fiscal advisors about adjustments in aid ratios across the state. I think they got a better picture for us legal. Um, we can run the previous project, the original project, at 625 yeah. with whatever the offsets are. We can run the, the one of the one of the 56 to 58 million dollar options because they're probably we're going to make an assumption right now that they're similar in feasibility. I'm just going to say that I don't know right. if that's 100 percent that, but let's for this conversation say it is. And then we'll run a third option, which is the one that came in at about whatever you said, 61 million or 60 million. And that would cover essentially, I think, there's four options on the table. There's the original plus yes. the three presented tonight. Yes. That would cover all through, all four of them. Reasonably close. Uh, I think and, that's a good one. And, and then we, I don't know what we're speaking for fiscal advisors in our past, but John, I know John and Craig were talking this morning and. There's enough nuances and things in the, in the parameters that have changed. Aid ratios committed dollars potentially from the capital reserve. They probably ought to run all those not those three options just to give you a better yeah, picture yes. to answer your question. Right. What if? Uh, what are we losing if we go, you know, to option two or three? Right. That makes sense. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that absolutely makes sense. How much time do you think this good advisors needs? So okay. we can tend to get this. I'll uh, think long. They've already run yeah. all of the ones that yeah. we know are just maximum cost allowances that just has to be updated for our buildings. Right. Our next meeting is the fourth. Different factors in different numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Our actual board meeting on what the ability so of pieces are. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, no, we're not. Schedule well, it's actually schedule tomorrow. Schedule yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Rhonda, I just want to ask you one more question sure. because you're here and you know. Um, the like when you look at these and, and just you know just tell me on a on a needs basis as far as you know, like I look at this one and it's got, you know, the two baseball, two softball fields. But then when you think about field sports and we have soccer, um, football, lacrosse, um, the marching band uses it. So like what what is what is our need more? Like, do we need to have for baseball slash softball, or do we need more field space for practice games for all of these other teams? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's what's the priority? Would you say? Not to put you on the spot. I was gonna say no pressure. It's a <laughs> it's a tough one, just because depending on you know. What you want at all. What you, yeah. well, need. Well, need and what you, want are different. Well, what you look at, yeah. like, field space is, is better than right. baseball, softball. Okay. But I just say that because I know that we have really great facilities that we use over at the fort. Now, if that was to go away, or that would be a nightmare for us right. then, right. because then we would have to really rethink what we provide so that we can still maintain the sports that we have. Right. Um, but right now, you know, field space, thinking outside of just, after, you know, outside of athletics with marching band and stuff, it's the actual field space, you know, the actual movement space versus it being just baseball and stuff. Well, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the amount of kids, I'm just thinking about like the amount of kids, right. the amount of teens, and like the amount of usage. Right. So like, it's, a, what, it's a projection thing too, because correct me if I'm wrong, but what I heard, Varsity soccer this year had 15 to 20 upper class who were playing. JV had like 30 kids trial. Right. So if that's the pattern down the road, right. you got a big program built. Right, that's that. kind of right. As opposed to like my daughter graduated last year, I think when girls soccer was there, there was 18 girls tried out last year, we're being here all the team. Good job. Right. But I think the girls had that same issue a couple years too, right. where the modified team had like 45 girls going out for a team. Right. So Depending on what the numbers, but then like little leagues, the little are they on the rise again? And they were baseball, they were. Is anybody go? Yeah, they're um, on board or whatever. They're healthy. They're healthy. They're so not, yeah. it's. Like I think it all 19, depends on what the media can't like, say when your kids play. They're healthy. My kids. Yeah. 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 Ye
I mean, our numbers are up. Like this fall, we have three a lot of just fall sports, just JV and varsity sports. Our numbers are right now that we have registered are 308 heads. So our numbers are up. So and that's that doesn't even include modify. That's a whole another entity right now because that registration portal is still open because football for them you don't know, start doesn't start until the 27th and the rest of the modified sports start on the 5th. So, you know, that's, it's a, it's a good problem to have, but we are looking at all of a sudden having some cuts that we need to make. And I'm hoping that, you know, with the changes that we've been making throughout the year that I've been here, that that's just gonna, you're gonna see each season, you know, getting information out to parents and stuff like that of what opportunities that we have that we're gonna see this, this issue be, you know, where we have large amounts of kids that are registered. For so a lot of teams have cut, a lot of times the cut on this team helps this team. Yes, right. Because the kid can say, okay, they didn't make it here, I'm going over here. Right, right, right. right. I think it's, we, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, just the even, like, again, I'm always trying to think of, like, you know, in the future, like, is, like, the future of the property at the middle school. Like, is that in anybody's thought process of like going forward, like as things change or grow or whatever, like how do we, what are our future plans for that there? Or maybe that's gonna help us make our decision here knowing that down the road, we're going to do something different there. There are some issues at the middle school. Um, they, we have um, some protected areas right. because of the bats. Um, we also so have, land yeah. Much useful. Right, okay. So so that's been looked at, and then there's also some drainage areas with that uh, prevent building. So when you look at this kind of stuff, and I know Brightbank was another entity that if we would have had a um, JV girls softball this year, we would have looked at trying to utilize Brightbank, which we were told that we could use it. We would just have to get it up and running with our crew yeah. to be able to have that to modify. Uh -huh. um, but knowing the sports that we have, you know, the field space is, is, is better for us to have, you know, like the open field space for lacrosse and, and soccer and different things, because when you try to find those spaces, it's really yeah, difficult right. to find. Nobody's gonna say, hey, come over to the floor and you can use the outfield in the right. little league, you yes. know what I mean, to, to no. play a soccer game. That's not gonna happen. Right. Where if you, you can get like a, even a, a small field at, at Kingsford, like on the side of their playground or something like that. The, the actually utilizing that kind of a field and knowing that we have really good softball and baseball fields right. in the community, that they, the partnership there lets us use yes. I And so, I think that that's a great point, and that's kind of what I was tr like, yeah. trying to lead to is that we have, I think we do have to think about those things because partnerships are important, and if we do have that partnership with the city to say, you know, baseball, we have these beautiful fields over there, then maybe that's gonna help us make our decisions here as to what the priorities are for field space. What do we need, and you I, know? And I think it's important to point out because this plan was distributed. It's one of the three that was put out there, particularly for new board members, that this is not the plan we went out to the voters for. Right. Right. This was a Cadillac plan that we scaled back right. many months ago. This is probably a $75 million plan. We, we're showing it to show the scale, the reconsiderations that were made to get to the to the project that we actually went out with. But this is Dean. I've got a two bind. softball, two baseball. I've got a binder I can leave with you. It's got all the sketches that we've done over the years. Okay. Just so we, because like when we were talking yeah. last time, I know we had talked about what well, could we do a baseball and a softball overlapping behind the high school. Well, one of our sketches actually showed that and showed that it wouldn't work, it would overlap. So yeah. I can leave that with you so sure. that way yeah. for future Absolutely. discussions yeah. or, yeah. you know, you can take a look at all the different options that have been explored. Okay. okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Do we want to take a look at that? Yeah. With all of these, um, the parking lot right outside here comes closer so for access yes. to the Edson and Grand. Yes. Okay. Because I watched somebody walk in with a walker the other day. It's a, it's a long way. It's a long, <laughs> way. It's a long way. Yeah. I also um, have in there a parking summary because we had talked about that last time. Yeah. So like the district office right now, you've got about 30 spaces proposed for what went out for referendum and any of the few the sketches now which have 99. Okay. You're gaining about 69 spaces there. The front parking at Layton are gaining about 15 spaces. Um, and then Liberty Street at the high school stays at about 144. So we are going to gain quite a bit of space over here as well. And the other thing I wanted to know does anybody have any data on um, as far as like 
when you put capital projects out and timelines? Yeah. Yes. Not, no, not the necessarily best time. Time. Yes. Best time. Yes. Yes. Best time. Because I'm thinking if you're going November, <laughs> if elections November, yeah. what are the chances of people going on to that you're gonna have a you're gonna hit a conflict with that thing you're doing because the general election and everything is just put it off in December. December is a great month, especially if you want to buy community funding from parents because you can schedule it with an event that you're having for parent teacher night conferences or a uh, concert or you know really try to pinpoint district wide we're gonna hit this thing and you typically have two or three locations for voting. You can try to get those located at those facilities. All so we don't vote at our yeah. facilities though. Oh, that's yeah. right. We don't. Well, if they're nearby. But if they're out and about, yeah, they're, they're out anyway. Right. Yeah. Then so they're going to make sure you're going to stay home. You stop yeah. by. Yeah. Let us know what your opinion is. I think the time of the year Craig mentioned the one 11 15 or 12 15, in other words, February. January 31 to February 15. But again, depends on the community. Some communities yeah. also vote for us. Everything gets voted in May. Yeah. Uh, so well, just, it varies on the community. The only issue I can see with the February vote is that they're going to say, well, what are my taxes going to be at the end? Getting, you start to get into that before you start your budget cycle. Yeah, I would think January would be great because it's just after Christmas holidays. People are like, no, they don't want to spend any more money. And yeah. Or they're gone. Maybe part of the PR thing too is what I heard from some people that were, um, I don't know what I want to call them, but they go to Florida. So so store store store. Is there anything that we can make sure that they get out there for that if the people have left when we go to do this, right. whether it's in December or whatnot, that they can do an absentee bound? Because there were so many people oh, that asked yes, about yeah, that yeah. after the yeah, fact yeah, that I was great. like, uh, yeah, you could have. Right. Yeah, there was. It's, there's no different <coughs> difference from this type of vote than the regular budget vote. So it's a process. Same, same yeah. process. It's the same process. Same thing. I just think that so many people it. don't ever think of that because the regular like vote, sort of vote, the vote is in May. Right. So everybody's back at right. that point where there were so many people that were sending me yeah, emails or emails texting yeah. or whatever. Yeah. me, and I was like, yeah. you well, know, I think maybe if we just even did like a reminder, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. with like being a to get the absentee or whatever, something that was, you know, if most of them, most snowbirds leave like October ish, you know, and send it out before so that they pick up their stuff before. You didn't make it easy. Is that something legally you could post them? Or they have to come pick up? They have to come pick up. What if we don't want them voting? Right, you can't make it. <laughs> 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 you can't send out multiple rows. ones. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're the fixed right. income retirees that voted it down. Yeah, I think there's. Is this off the record? No. <laughs> uh, actually, I think I think there's more people that are in support of that than I, I. I really do think the people that don't, you know, that feel like they've washed their hands of it, they raise their kids, they don't want to. I really think that number is a lot smaller. I know that there were a lot of people that were upset that they felt like this was pushed through without them, you know, because they were away. And so there was a lot of grumbling about that, and I think that probably worked against it too. So, I mean, you're always going to have problems. You're always, always, you're not going to make everybody happy. Well, and I think even kind of to that point, and I just said to Dean when we make, make our next meeting, I think we should um, be cognizant of all the working people who would like to be here and, and hear what's going on, and they can't be here because we made the meeting at 4 o'clock. I mean, I had quite a few people who were like, why is your meeting at 4? Like, I'm at work, I can't come. So I think that we, we need, you know, it, it, it didn't pass. So we need to hear what the community has to say. We need to make them feel engaged, included, um, you know, that we're listening to what they're saying. So I think just even starting with things like that and making our meetings at a time that works for more people, um, I think that that is a good first first step. That's fine. You know? That's fine. Hmm? That's fine. Um, yeah. They get to because people who get out of work, they're not going to make it. They right. just have to go. Yeah. It's got to be five, uh, five thirty or six. Uh, yeah. I think if you rolled at five thirty, I think that's enough time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. so people can get off or drive over here. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I have the same token. I yeah. remember a couple more than you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you did. Yeah. I did. All, all time. I think Amy's just talking about our meetings. I'm planning meetings. Yes. Right. Yeah. The contribution. Yeah. So the people can yeah. contribute. I mean, we have a couple people who came, but I, I definitely know that. I was contacted by some people who were like, oh my God, I would have loved to come here and right. see. So, and On the flip side is, 
I'm, I try to be sensitive to my staff yeah, who are here at 7 a.m. Yeah. And, and then sometimes we also run into, you're, you've got people are going to their kids' athletics. Well, well, I think that's just another moment where we get to get to the social media aspect of it and yeah. be able to communicate it that way yeah. and be able to get it out there and start that dialogue. dialogue. Start. What's that? We need a jingle. We need a jingle. <laughs> That's what we need. Oh, just don't make it liberty, liberty, liberty. So <laughs> September 10th, what's the name? Yeah. or se how about Tuesday? Tuesday I guess Monday's not always good. Tuesday, September 11th, mm -hmm. or, how, or Wednesday, September 12th. Mm -hmm. Try to stay out of the first week of school. Yeah, I'm good. Well, it's I think better for us too if we yeah, alternate well. weeks. We're not doing back to back. Workshops and board meetings. So our board meeting yeah. is okay, it's the prior course. week. It's the fourth. Okay. So we would stay away from that week. Okay, I can see Either the tenth or the twelfth. Wednesday, September twelfth. We gotta get John we need John Pick here, so we'll have to it's tentative, so we'll have to yeah, see if they're if yeah, they're available. I can't do the tentative. So, so it's the twelfth at five thirty? Tentatively. Do you have that, Karen? You can't do the 12th, but I can. Oh, you, you can't, can't That week, I can do the 11th or the 13th. The Tuesday. The 11th or the 13th. Oh, 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 oh. 13th. 13th? Why are you going to do Because um, Corey can't. Oh, no. Oh, I can do the 11th. I can do the 11th or the 13th. Either of those. That goes the last one. Two Yeah. What can we say the 11th or the 12th or, or 13th? I'm sorry, right now, so we get uh, I got a goal to the 13th. Okay, but that you never the other we're not gonna make any, we're not gonna pass any, right? No, it's good that we get the most. What's the first day? Oh, Monday's the time, Monday's Tuesday's the time, yeah. So Tuesday and Thursday, the 11th and the 13th, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, the, other, the other thing that we'll have John pick do because the second and third option you can add a second and third turf field to give you a cost multiple right. for the extra I think Corey said six fifty, that's the construction value, the project value is probably about a million. Mm -hmm. So every million you add for another turf field is right. a lot to actually come on. Yeah. yeah. We always appreciate you guys coming. I yes, know it's a you. long way, but it's a big project, and you've been sticking with us for a long, long time. But we really need your expertise when we have these conversations, and, yeah. and we're we're getting closer to not only knowing what we want, but how we're going to market it. Yep. So it's been a long road, right? Yeah. So and just to recap, I'll make sure um, Nancy, I'm going to work with you and John. Yeah. I'm going to have him kind of model a 58 million, a 61, and a 63 million, just as incremental to give you an idea with different bond ratios. Because, you know, like being 58 million is like 95% of the work. The 61 is probably about 90%, and the 63 is right before what was previously done was being 80%. He's going to update the building A ratio to accommodate those. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to give him the $4 million capital reserve. And then he I'll get you a new number. Very good, a new number. I'll get okay. you a new number. All right, get that That's new an number. Estimate. And then I think he'll be able to quickly turn around something. We'll get it out before our meeting yeah. so you have a chance to look at it. And then we can talk about it. Is he going to be able to do it? We'll put together a list of what's not here. Yeah. And Nancy, when, you, when we, get those, we get those before the meeting to look through? Thank you. 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 Thank you.